Welcome to Fair Game. I'm Christine Leahy, and my guest today is a rapper, an actor, and the reigning UFC welterweight champion of the world, Tyron, the chosen one, Woodley, is That's here. That's quite the intro Hold there. on, hold on. The chosen one? You know what? I know you're getting that because LeBron just pulled up, and LA is going crazy. Mm -hmm. I don't know who had the nickname first. I think he did. But when I There's thought about it. There's a rapper that has that nickname, it is? too. Uh-huh. I didn't know that. Yeah, Kate Cuddy. Dang. Yeah. Well, if it come down to fighting over it, I think I might end up with the name. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want to fight might be you. a task, but I think I can get tall. Kid Cuddy pretty easy. Uh, okay, so you're from Ferguson, Missouri. You yeah. are one of 13 kids. You were the 11th yeah. child. What is that like? You know what? Um, growing in a house with 13 kids, you don't recognize that you are almost scraping from the bottom of the pan because really you just laugh and you're entertaining each other. And after you get three, four, five kids, it's almost an autopilot. The oldest one makes sure the younger one don't get out of line. That clothes start to get handed down from, I even <laughs> had some of the sister's jeans with zippers on the ankles. I'd never forget that. Jordash jeans. Oh, those are cool that dates I me. And I had a pair of those on and I remember, damn, when I get to school, they're gonna tear me apart. So did you so, ever get new clothes? I did get new clothes, but I didn't get my first pair of name brand shoes into either eighth grade or high school. So now my kids have, ne like they, not that it's all about material things, but just sometimes things from childhood get stuck into your mind. Like I remember, uh, remember getting evicted from my house and that was like tragedy. Like I used to walk past the house, see the pink sticker, know you used to live there, all your friends knew it and you had to walk past it. So when I got a chance, you know, beating some, beating some ass, since I can say that, beating some ass in the UFC, I just pay my house off because I don't want my kids to ever be mm. in position or jeopardy to have it happen. So to answer your question, I think just you learned how to love the quality of life. You learn how to support each other. You have fun. I think that's part of the reason why I was able to get into stand-up comedy because we had the, we didn't have money for everybody to go to movies. Imagine going to the movies with 15 people. That's expensive. That's a big bill. So you say that growing up, it was just a daily struggle just to survive in That's your neighborhood. Sure. What were the kind of things you were seeing? Uh, a lot of drug dealing. Um, I probably heard gunshots every other day. Um, you know, we had a lot of airplane noise because I live really close to the um, St. Louis airport. Mm -hmm. So the airplane would come over and would shake, shake the windows in the house. But at times, you'd be like, well, I'd rather have the airplane shake and make that loud noise and hear the gunshots. So um, drug dealing, murders, um, pretty much. I mean, you ever see the movie New Jack City? Mm -mm. New Jack City is a movie with Wesley Snipes was Nino Brown. He was like this notorious drug lord and he was just vicious, had no heart, but he took over this apartment building called the Carter. And he went into this apartment building as a, uh, like a uh, project, uh, projects, and he took it over. And he turned into this huge drug ring, and it was basically producing drugs out of it. Police didn't want to go in there, but I lived by what our version of the Carter was. So I had to walk past that every day. And guys, like, what you wearing? Why you wearing that color? You know, if I was wearing the wrong color, whatever. So then I got to the point where I was like, I'm not gonna do this every day. So I just took my butt to the bottom of the hill. I said, jump me in because I don't want to deal with it. You I'm not, did? yeah, I'm not suggesting that's what everybody did, should do, but that's what my environment was. Wait, and was. so when you say jump me in, that means gang initiation. Now I have the beat security me up of the, and yeah, beat me up, stump me, jump off the banister, multiple guys beating you up at the same time. And I remember, you know, when they was jumping into this gang, I was fighting back. Then I was like, I'm kind of beating them up. If I keep beating them up, then this is going to last longer. So let me just let them do their little thing so I can get out of here. You made it out of there. You wind up going to the University of Missouri where you wrestled, and then you go into MMA. How does that all happen? Well, wrestlers were at the point in time where I got into it. So 2005 is when I graduated. When I graduated, the wrestlers, they were taking over the UFC. The Ultimate Fighter season one had it came out. And in that season, I'm like, well, that's my teammate from college. That's my strength and conditioning coach. Who I used to wrestle against this guy. So I saw a lot of familiar faces. And it was just a huge puzzle that all the martial artists couldn't figure out. The jiu-jitsu guys that, you know, they thrive on stretching your arm out, getting your arm bar, getting a choke, or spinning you around into a pretzel. It's very difficult to do that to a wrestler because they got a very strong base and it's hard to shake their base. Um, the strikers couldn't stop the wrestlers from taking them down. So very quickly, I became a wrestling coach for MMA. Mm. Then I was around it long enough. I was like coaching all these UFC fighters, 
you know, helping them out with their wrestling. And then I said, well, let me just give it a try. I never really wanted to fight. I never got into fighting because I wanted to be a UFC champion. I wanted to give it a try. And then once I did it, my first five fights were like less than a minute, like like stupid fast. Like I, I had seven amateur fights and six of the seven were done within the first few seconds of the fight. Wow. Yeah. So, so I'm like, well, let me get this a real try. Yeah, let me yeah. make some money from this. Yeah. Is it true your first fight was at the Holiday Inn? My first? How do you get that information? Dang. Research. Wow. Well, that is 100% fact. Holiday Inn was called the Patriot Act. My teammate Ben Askren um, was now undefeated fighter as well. He also debuted. He promoted the show and fought on the show. And yeah, I had a um, quick fight. You've come a long way since the Holiday Inn. Your next fight isn't going to happen probably until next year. Yep. Everyone wants to see you fight Colby Covington. Who is that? A lot of people want to see it. Is that going to happen? I don't even know who that is. Oh, you don't know his I'm going to beat him up, yeah. You know why? It's, it's more of a, a public service. Sometimes you do things that it's just good for the country. Mm -hmm. He just needs to get his ass whipped because he's annoying. Oh. Um, he is very terrible at talking crap because I think he thinks he has to do that to promote a fight. And he used to just be my training partner. I used to pay to beat him up. So you used to pay him. Oh, he was your partner, so you paid him. He fights for the same fight. team I okay. fight for. We both okay. fight for American Top Team. In the beginning, when he first was getting into fighting, um, I used to pay him like 500 bucks a week. He'd come in to St. Louis. I put him at a place, give him a rental car, pay for his food. And he would be my training partner. Yeah, yeah. So basically, when I say that, it's jokingly, but it's actually true. Does this animosity go back before? Like, how how long does this go back? Or is this just um, well, because we never of really the had animosity because you know he wasn't he wasn't even a professional fighter yet. Yeah. And I was I was getting ready to fight for a number one contendership fight, and I brought him in to help me out. And um, I just remember, I can talk, I can say whatever I want to, can I? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. All right. <clears throat> I'm not gonna use my Fox filter. Um, not here. It's rem fair game. Remember? Oh wow. Well, yeah, sure. The show is called Fair Game. All right. Well. We was in a training session. I just remember having him in these submissions, and he would turn blue like a um, blueberry. And he would put it up on my charge card to either let him go or put his ass to sleep. So a few times, I'm like, he's about to go out. And I let him out. He popped his head out, boo, boo, boo. And now he acts like he defended the, the submission and keeps trying to continue with the live go. Mm. So now I'm like, all right. Okay, then we'll, we'll start doing another driller technique. And he was an all-American wrestler, so he was brought in to do what? Wrestle. So we get to the wrestling portion of practice. All right, Tyra, need his partners for wrestling. And he's like, do 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 Walking around in the weight room, looking like he don't hear people calling him to come to wrestle. Um, the last straw is I was wrestling him, and I told my coach, I said, I'm about to torture him today. I'm about to take him down and watch how he gets pissed off. For some reason, he thought in his mind that me as being an All-American as well, that I should not be able to take him down. So I started taking him down and taking him down and taking him down and taking him down. And he got so mad and livid and busted out the room and swearing and cursing. And it got to a sparring session and I was like, Kobe, let me holler at you right quick. He said, cool. And this is the first time anybody have ever heard the story, so you're lucky. Thank you. Nobody's ever heard this. I was saving this for the press conference. But he, I said, let me tell you something. You're a You're a And today, if you don't tap out, I'm going to break your arm. I'm going to put you to sleep. And if you get spicy when we start striking, I'm going to knock you out. You make the choice. I'm not doing that no more today. We're not going to play around. If you're in a submission, learn how not to get put into it. Don't make me, the fighter, choose not to hurt you. And we had that sparring session, and miraculously, he had to go back to Florida. He was injured. His ankle was hurting. He didn't do it. He didn't do it. Wow. Yeah. No, he did the sparring session. He oh. did. So he's doing that. I'm doing this. You don't need to say anything. Pretty simple.